Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here. And well, a lot of people keep asking me to do videos on my favourite guns in Battlefield 1. Going over the ones I tend to use the most, along with the ones I think are just generally the best in the game. Of course, whenever there's a video which talks about the best things in games, it's obviously going to have a lot of very subjective stuff in it, as everyone's got their own idea of what's the best, and everyone has their own opinions. I honestly think that pretty much all the guns in Battlefield 1 have their own place, and they can all be pretty effective in their own different ways. I should know, I've reviewed them all. But there are a few specific ones that stand out a bit more than others, which I tend to either enjoy using more so, fitting into my playstyles a bit better, or just ones that seem to be a bit more effective as a whole, that are better suited for carrying out their intended role in the game. This video is going to specifically run over my favourite assault weapons, and the ones I think are generally best for doing what the assault class was designed to do, attacking the enemy head-on within closer ranges, and playing with an offensive mindset to take over objectives and push the enemy back. So anyway, at number 6 is the Shogun Inertial, but more specifically, the Factory Variant. A gun which isn't quite as popular as some of the other assault weapons, but still functions as one of the best shotguns when it comes to overall balance. If I was to describe the Shogun Inertial, it's like the middle ground weapon between the 12G Automatic and the M97 Trench Gun, in the sense that it deals more damage per pellet than the 12G Auto, but also has less recoil and a quicker rate of fire than the M97. With the gun firing a buckshot consisting of 12 pellets, all dealing a maximum damage of 9.1 up to 14 meters, you can technically kill an enemy in one blast if you manage to land at least 11 of those pellets on target up close, which can often be a bit of a tricky thing to do, giving some of the stronger shotguns a slight edge when it comes to that first initial blast. But the Shogun's second shot, which is a lot more reliable at killing than the 12G automatic, is still going to be much easier to land than those harder hitting alternatives, which all generally kick around a lot more and have wider choke patterns to increase the spread of your pellets as they travel through the air. Because the recoil is quite low, and with the Shogun Inertial firing at 163 RPM, which is faster than the M97 Trench and Model 10A, this makes it a more spammable option that can quickly wipe out enemies within a couple of blasts up close, and although the 12G Automatic can kill even faster in CQC with a couple of shots, the Shogun's going to do it more reliably, dishing out a bit more damage over range to secure that 1-2 to two shot takedown even easier if your opponent is slightly further away. For these reasons, I find that it's a very effective weapon that isn't limited to firing slowly or dealing weaker amounts of damage, but instead sort of meets in the middle to form a really good all-rounder, probably the best well-rounded shotgun in the game, taking these several different factors and qualities into account. You're going to be a much stronger player against most of your enemies within those shorter sight lines, and although you can be outmatched by some of the Assault's other weapons, the Shogun Inertial is one of the more dependable choices that doesn't put you in as many vulnerable positions if you miss, as you can keep tapping the trigger to keep the buckshot flying, all whilst remaining fairly accurate whilst you do so. The gun might not always be a one-hit kill machine, but its higher speed and accuracy definitely make up for its general lack of stopping power, which I find can often be a better choice to pick in situations when you're under a lot of pressure. At number 5 is the MP18, another very well-rounded gun that does a really good job at catering for a lot of different scenarios and just generally doing things right. It might not be the hardest hitting weapon in the Assault class, and it doesn't spray loads of bullets out all over the place to give it any sort of crazy kill times, but the MP18 is a steadier, more predictable SMG that's very consistent in the way it performs, and just like the Shogun Inertial, trades a bit of its raw power and speed in favour of being a more reliable weapon as a whole. By firing at 550 RPM and killing in 4 bullets up close, possibly 7 further away, this makes it a fairly competitive short range SMG, which might have some of the slowest kill times of all the assault guns, but is still generally going to drop your enemies faster than a lot of the other weapons for the other classes. And of course, if you start shooting at your opponent first, you're still going to have the advantage over them, even if they're wielding a faster firing gun, as there isn't really a massive gap between the SMG kill times, and if you get the drop on your enemy, they're usually not going to have enough time to react or counter your attack anyway. But despite being one of the slower killing SMGs, which still isn't exactly all that slow at killing, the MP18 does quite a lot of other things with better results, to make it slightly more versatile. It's a great weapon when it comes to ammo management, as it can hold up to 32 rounds at a time, and its magazines can be exchanged pretty quickly, so while you're running around in the thick of the action taking on multiple enemies one after the other, the MP18's usually got enough bullets to do what you need it to, without leaving you vulnerable in those dangerous and often hectic situations. The fact that the gun doesn't blaze through its ammo at a rapid rate also means that you'll be able to control how many bullets you'll be spending too, and when you do need to reload, those snail drum and box magazines can be swapped over in just 2.1 seconds if you've still got any ammo left over, meaning you'll almost constantly be ready to fire and take on anyone you happen to come across. Although all three variants are pretty strong choices that go hand in hand with an aggressive play style, my favourite one in particular is probably the Trench, 
down to it having those lower hip fire spread values that really help to complement offensive tactics. Being able to shoot straight from the hip, or whilst remaining fairly precise and more manoeuvrable in CQC, is a huge benefit for allowing the gun to shine up close, and make up for those slightly slower kill times by cutting out the need to aim down sights altogether in order to increase accuracy. At number 4 is the Model 1900, aka the Boomstick. Definitely one of the more punishing but trickier shotguns to master in the Assault class. It's basically the ultimate risk-reward close-quarter weapon that pretty much puts all of its eggs in one basket, giving you a ridiculous combination of speed and power, all while sacrificing its ability to take on multiple enemies and generally be an easy thing to use. As there's a hell of a lot riding on you to land your shots, but it's much more reliable at actually killing people and ensuring you're going to deal enough damage to put a player down hard and fast. The Model 1900 is basically a rapid-firing version of the Model 10A factory, which only holds two shots at a time, being a double-barrel shotgun. Each buckshot consists of 12 pellets, all dealing a maximum of 12.5 up to 14 meters, so easily enough to take down another player with just one buckshot, providing at least eight of those pellets land on target in close quarters. Now, although there's a lot of other shotguns that can also kill reliably in one blast, including the Model 10A Hunter, which has got a tighter pellet spread to ensure more damage will be dealt further away, the Model 1900 fires at 300 RPM, and can even fire both barrels at once if you really want it to. So the gun's not only going to dish out those higher damage values, but it can also potentially fire its second shot quicker than all of its competitors, including the fast-firing but still fairly weak 12G automatic. So if you come across a couple of enemies in a close-range situation, you can take care of them both, so long as you're quick to the trigger, and so long as you're accurate enough. This is basically like having a Model 10A factory that can fire in rapid succession, meaning if your first shot misses outright or doesn't kill your target straight away, you'll be able to quickly readjust and finish them off with that second blast to make sure they're going to go down, and with the gun generally dealing more damage, this gives it even more range and increases its two-shot kill even further than most of the other shotguns on offer. The Model 1900 does have quite a lot of horizontal kick that could cause your second blast to stray off target slightly if you're shooting the gun quickly, causing less pellets to connect. But providing you shoot a little bit slower to readjust your aim when taking on someone beyond point-blank range, this never really proved to be a massive flaw, as it's actually a bit more controllable than the Model 10A and the M97 trench gun sweeper and hunter variants, due to its vertical kick being lower. The main problem that the gun has is all down to it only holding two shots, but so long as you're careful, prepare to switch to your sidearm and learn to retreat to cover in between reloading, the Model 1900 is an absolute monster. It allows you to kick ass left, right and centre, and makes you feel like a total badass while you do. One of the most rewarding weapons in the whole game that's a hell of a lot of fun to use. Whatever you think about the Automatico, there's no denying that it's a brutal weapon to use in a close-range gunfight, hence why it's made it to number 3 on my little list of terrors. The sheer speed of the gun is usually enough to make up for the Automatico's general lack of damage per bullet, as it's basically a hosepipe of death, spraying out loads of rounds very quickly to ultimately decrease kill times and give your opponents barely any time to react. It's interesting to know that the Automatico typically takes an extra bullet to kill than a lot of the other SMGs, but that 900 RPM fire rate allows you to quickly chip off lots of small chunks of health at a very fast pace, which actually helps you out more than you'd think in those hectic war zones, where there's loads of dangerous stuff happening to soften up your opponents. If you're close to all the action where the Automatico excels, you're likely to come across a lot of already weakened enemies that just simply need finishing off as they've been bombed to bits by planes flying over, hit by scouts and medics further away in the distance, and spent far too much time dodging incoming grenades. This is where the gun's lack of power becomes less of an issue, as you'll be able to kill in less shots, but still fire at the rapid rate of 900 RPM, and with the Automatico being more geared up for close quarter chaos, all you've basically got to do is point at your target and unleash that stream of damage, without really having to worry too much about being accurate or landing any individual bullets in particular, as if you miss a few shots, it's not really going to matter. You could argue that the Machine and Pistol Storm and Thompson Annihilator both fire at the same, or at least similar rate, but yet deal more damage to allow them to kill in one less bullet, ultimately decreasing kill times even further, and allowing them to be even deadlier still within those closer ranges. But they're both also known for running out of ammo quicker, due to them having smaller capacities. Plus, they also take longer to reload, which can often be a huge detriment if you are indeed surrounded by danger and other players that want to kill you. The Automatico's snappier reloads and slightly bigger magazines allow it to be a bit more dependable, and usually gives you enough firepower to at least deal with a couple of enemies in CQC without ever really needing to worry about having enough ammo to finish the job. Which is often why I find that it's not only effective at taking down close-range targets, but it's also slightly better balanced than some of the other rapid-firing SMGs that sometimes leave you more vulnerable in the thick of the action. 
Of the three variants on offer, I find that the trench variant is easily my personal favourite, as just like the MP18 trench, it allows you to fire from the hip more accurately. Which is a godsend in those close quarter fights, and goes hand in hand with what the Automatico does best. Ever since the game first came out, the Hell Regal has grinded the gears of other non Hell Regal using players, and has often been debatedly branded as an overpowered gun. It's an extremely popular assault weapon, accounting for roughly about 40% of all SMG kills in the game, and for some people, it's literally the go to choice for all situations, no matter the situation. There's a reason why so many people choose to use the Hell Regal, and that's because it's not only a really well rounded weapon, but also kills very quickly, and well, let's face it, it's a really bloody easy thing to use and it doesn't exactly require much skill to perform well, hence why it's typically known to be a bit of a newbie choice to pick. In fact, I personally don't even like using the Hell Regal, because it often feels like I'm cheesing my way to victory, without really having to try very hard. But I guess this is probably one of the main reasons why it's just so successful as a weapon, and one of the reasons why it ranks so high on my list of best guns. The Hell Regal isn't the fastest shoot in SMG in Battlefield 1, nor is it the most accurate but it's much easier to manage than a lot of the other rapid firing spray and prey weapons, and can therefore perform a bit better against targets further away, all whilst killing fairly quickly at the same time, before your opponent really has much opportunity to shoot back, which is often why I find the Hell Regal to be a more reliable choice to pick than the revamped SMG-0818, which might fire faster, but suffers from a much more violent recoil pattern that causes more shots to fly off target, and can often seem like a more unpredictable thing to use against opponents slightly beyond those closer ranges. If you look at the overall negatives of the gun, the Hell Regal doesn't really do anything to present you with a problem that you need to try and master or overcome while you play, unlike some of the other skill cannons that kill slightly quicker, but are more prone to leaving you vulnerable, or require a steadier aim to control recoil. The Hell Regal does almost everything reasonably well. Its reloads are generally a bit longer than average, but that's not really going to matter too much, as you've got either 60 or 120 bullets to do plenty of damage with so it's not all that often that you'll ever find running out of ammo to be a massive issue, and because the Hell Regal is such a well rounded SMG that ticks all the main boxes for being an effective assault weapon, it means that rubbish players can usually do reasonably well with it, and good players can often wipe the floor with the enemy team. So my number one assault weapon in the game is probably the Ribberaws 1918, particularly the factory variant, one of the closest things Battlefield 1 has to an assault rifle that I find to be a really solid choice for nearly all situations. It's not the fastest shooting gun in the class, firing at just 550 RPM, so the same as the MP18, and so it's going to kill at a similar kind of rate up close, which isn't exactly a bad thing, as the gun can still deal with short range targets well enough to be a competitive close quarter choice. But there are others in the assault class that do kill even quicker, and can therefore beat you in a gunfight if you're not fast enough to the trigger. But what the Ribberaw lacks in overall speed, it gains from other attributes, like its ability to deal more damage than average over distance, and killing one less bullet than most of the SMGs, due to the gun firing an intermediate cartridge. This also gives it a higher muzzle velocity than normal too, making enemies further away a bit easier to hit, with you not having to lead their movements quite as much. And I should also mention that the Ribberaw has something very unique to the Assault class, that most of the other weapons don't. A bipod and you can take advantage of that higher damage and muzzle velocity with the aid of that bipod to take down ranged targets much more quickly and easily, giving the ribber rolls a wider span of effectiveness, where a lot of the other assault guns are limited to only being deadly or usable up close. The gun does have a fair amount of recoil to contend with, a little bit more than the MP18, but it's generally got a lower horizontal recoil than most, making it fairly accurate to a certain degree. It might jolt upwards a bit more than you'd probably like, but this can easily be countered, as the Ribberall has actually got some pretty low first shot recoil multipliers, allowing you to tap and burst fire much more effectively, which is always really useful for taking on targets slightly further away, over those close to medium distances. And this is also something that complements the weapon's usability over range even more. It doesn't hold a hell of a lot of ammo, with a magazine size of 25 rounds, but that's still usually enough to kill a few enemies and let the gun do its thing. You're not left vulnerable for too long when you do run out of ammo, as it only takes 2.1 seconds for a tactical reload and about 2.7 seconds for a full one, which are some of the quickest reloads in the entire assault class. All of these factors combined make the Ribberall 1918 a very dependable and versatile weapon that can not only perform well in close quarter combat, but can also usually be a more effective gun to use over further distances too, at ranges where most of the other assault weapons would really struggle to deal much damage or even be able to stay on target. So these are some of the assault guns in Battlefield 1 that I consider to be either my favourites or the best. 
though I do generally use all the weapons in the game fairly equally, and I think they're all better than each other in their own specific way, depending on the scenario and depending on the user's playstyle. So let me know down in the comments what your favourite assault weapons are in the game, and stay tuned for loads more content coming pretty soon. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in that next episode.